He looked at me, Sister Lucifer, and he said, what a pitiful looking sight that may be. But you know what? He understood. Ah, oh, if I could just get him to accept my love. If I could just get him to understand my love. Oh, I don't understand it. I'll never be able to understand it. But I did accept his love. I did accept his love. I understand that he loved me more than I can ever love him. I understand today that his love reached beyond all the love that can be shed in this world. Amen. I have no love down here. I've got a wife that I love dearly. I've got children that I love dearly. I've got grandkids that I love dearly. But you know what? The love for all of them cannot begin to match the love that he has had for me. Amen. Something on the inside of me said, I gotta reach him. I gotta love him. I gotta go beyond the norm. Hallelujah. I can't just be normal in this. I can't just be satisfied with coming to church and having a dead, dull, dry, boring service because it's not about that. It's about how much he loved me. The reason I'm here tonight is to give him honor and to give him glory for what he did for me and to love him. You see, when I come into his presence, when I lift my hands, I'm not just making a motion. It's not that to me. It means more to me than just praising him because it's church and it's a thing to do. It means more to me than that. When I lift my hands, I'm saying thank you, Jesus, for the love you showed me. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus, for caring for me when I was so unlovable. The folks in this world, they couldn't love me. Brother Rob, they couldn't care for me the way he's done. In fact, most of the folks in the world have a tendency to condemn. They have a tendency to point their finger. They have a tendency to say, I told you so. But God said, you know, I see some good in them. <laughs> I see some potential that's there. I look beyond the faults. That's the kind of love that God has for me. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. He looked beyond the things that I was holding dear in this life and said, you know, there's a good heart in there somewhere. I've got to try to save him. I've got to try to redeem him. And so I'm going to share my love with him. I'm going to show him my love. And one night in a camp meeting years ago, some 44 years ago, as a young person, I stood before him and I began to cry and I couldn't get away. There was something that kept drawing me. You know what it was? It was his love for me. It kept drawing me. I kept trying to stop praying and walk away from the altar. But every time I would slow down, all of a sudden I would just begin to cry. I would just begin to weep. I couldn't stop weeping. At 2 o'clock in the morning, there's only two people left with me out there in the, in the campground. I'm laying on my back and I'm telling him, God, I'm not going anywhere until you fill me with the Holy Ghost. I, oh, you hear me. I know what your love is. I felt your love. I, it's, it's done more for me than anything already. But God, I'm not going to leave here until I'm filled with your spirit. Hallelujah. Because there was something wrong me. There was something that was pulling on me, Brother Condi. There was something that was reaching for me. And it wasn't anybody pulling me. There was nobody there that was saying, you need to go ahead and push on through. You know what? There was people that were giving up and walking away. But I wasn't about to walk away. Because I had already felt his spirit. I could already feel that love for me. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, everybody's desire is to be loved. Everybody's desire is, is to have somebody in this world that will love them no matter what. Somebody that will love them with all their bumps and bruises. Somebody that will love them. Amen. No matter what the situation is in their life. 
And as I lay on that floor of that campground, I could feel that love. And I said, God, I'm not going anywhere until I have it. Hallelujah. And you know what? About 2 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, I could feel that love as it began to bubble over on the inside of me. As his spirit came into me, hallelujah, I came to myself. I was speaking in another language as the spirit gave utterance. And there was such a joy. There was such a peace that filled my soul. Let me tell you something tonight. Amen. There is a power of God that is in this house right now. But God is here because he loves you. God is in this place. Amen. The reason he shows up is not so he can show out. The reason that he really shows up is because he loves you that much that he sees you. Not as a sinner but as somebody that he can redeem. As somebody that his love can set free. As somebody that he can turn around and use for his glory. Greater love hath no man than this. A man lay down his life for his friends. You know, never really considered myself to be a friend of God. You know, Abraham was called a friend of God. But I, uh, I just didn't feel like I was that important. The Bible said, greater love have no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. Hallelujah. And when he stood there with that cross on his shoulders going to Calvary, his body in that weakened condition after he had just endured that beating. There was something that was going on. What would make him take and carry that cross. He looked down through the ages. And he saw an old boy, just a teenager, who was getting ready to mess his life up. And he said, you know, I love that kid so much. He, he, he could have called 10,000 angels he, he looked at Pilate and, and he said, I could call the angels right now. This would be over with. Mm -hmm. He could have wiped out the whole entire court. He could have wiped out the whole entire city and walked away from it. But his love would not let him. His love for me. He didn't know me. Yes, he did. He knew who I was. He saw down through the ages. I might have been one of millions, but he saw me individually. And he said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Because somewhere down the line, there's going to be a teenage boy that's standing before me saying, God, I don't know what's wrong in my life. I don't know why I'm so messed up. I don't know why I've done some of the stupid things I've done. But God, if you'll forgive me, I'll take you on. I'll take your spirit. I'll take your love to me. And since that day, amen, he's loved me more than ever. And I've loved him. And the love continues to grow day by day. You know, the thing about Jesus is his love never diminishes. It never stops. It never slacks up. Hallelujah. He loves me today as much as he loved me yesterday. And he will love me tomorrow as much or not more than he loved me today. You hear me tonight? His love exceeds everything that you can even begin to imagine. He loves you with an undying love. Hallelujah. Why don't we just stand right now? Why don't we just lift our hands? Let's just thank him, my God. <laughs> God, I thank you for your love tonight, oh God. I want to thank you for your mercy to us, oh God. Lord, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit, God. It's not because of who we are, but it's because of who you are, Lord. Your love goes beyond anything we can begin to think, Lord. Your love goes 
God reaches 